Kodak Portra, my favourite film stock. I wasn't planning on releasing this video just yet due to having only recently released my Fujifilm pack, but since I announced that I'd made a Portra pack of presets with a tongue twister, I'm getting inundated every day with requests to release them. So here they are. And I know a lot of you aren't interested in presets and you like to tell me about it. And if this video is making you angry, then just don't watch it, turn it off. Go away, I'll make another video essay or video tutorial soon, don't worry. But whether I am shooting medium format or 35 mil, God, that's a heavy camera, the Pentax 67 brilliant camera though. Uh, Portra 400 is my go-to stock. 800 is lovely too, 160 I tend not to shoot quite as much because the light in Britain isn't ideal for 160. 400 is a better bet for most applications, especially given the latitude to which you can overexpose it and retain good highlight detail. So these presets are for the latest Creative Cloud versions of Lightroom and Photoshop. They are not backwards compatible with Lightroom 6, so don't get them if you're on a legacy version of Lightroom. They won't work. These ones don't use their own profiles like some other ones I've made. Uh, they're meant to be applied on top of a specific camera profile or Adobe profile or whatever you're using. So watch out if you've already set a profile by applying a different preset or something like that because it'll apply it on top. So you might want to reset the photo before you apply it uh, to avoid it going on top of some monochrome profile or something like that. Anyway, with that out of the way, let me show you how to install these and what they do. So there's a link in the description of these videos to download them. When you download them, you'll get this zipped file. If you unzip that, you will get a folder and in there will be a folder with all the presets in and also a folder with some film frames if you're into that sort of thing. They're PNGs and you can overlay them in Photoshop to give that little extra bit of realism. Some people like them, some people don't. You can just ignore them if you don't like them. So to install these in Lightroom Classic, you go to your develop module and then you click this little plus here and go to import presets. To install these in Lightroom CC, which will then sync to your mobile app, you go to file and import profiles and presets, or you can click this button here and then click this presets button, click this ellipsis and then go to import presets. So if you've installed these into Lightroom Classic, they should already be here in Photoshop. But if they're not, then you can go to this ellipsis here in your camera raw dialog box and go to import profiles and presets and they should appear here. So these are JW presets 3.2 because they're part of the Kodak range. Um, and in here you've got a load up here, which are just reset presets. They reset the frame, the grain, the vignette, or they reset what the preset has done, but they keep things like the white balance, the crop, the exposure. Then you go into your main presets. We've got Portra 160, Portra 400 and Portra 800. Each version has a pulled and a pushed version. Portra 400 also has a low contrast version for those sort of pastely low contrasty shots. We've also got NC, which uh, stood for natural color. VC, which stood for vivid color, which came in 160 and 400. And 400 also had UC, which was ultra color, which was something they released a bit later. Interesting stock, that one. I quite like that one, but these are discontinued ones ones now. So we have uh, a load of frames that you can add on your images and each stock has a grain kind of embedded within it but you can remove that grain there or you can change the grain by making it less or more with these grain presets here. You can add a bit of a vignette if you want to. So uh, starting off with this image that was taken on a 5D Mark 1 we're going to give it a Portra 400. If you see what that's done there it's made that green very different. I did say it was quite subtle. It's a very subtle look. So what should we do with this guy? Another Portra 400. It's subtle, but it makes quite a big difference. So uh, this forest, if we go Portra 400 for this, very subtle, but then we could try a pulled or a pushed. What's the low contrast do? That's a bit too low. Quite like the pulled one there. So for this one, let's look at something different. Maybe let's take a Portra 400 NC. That's the natural color. That's the discontinued one. And I'm gonna add a medium vignette onto that as well, just to draw attention to our subject there. So that's where we were. That's with the preset. So this one takes in a more of a studio environment. Let's try a Portra 400 NC for this one. 
So this we've got a studio one again. Let's try Portrait 400. Uh, that's this Portrait 400 just works on everything. Portrait 400 pushed. That's quite. It's quite nice. What does pulled look like? It's quite faded. It's, again, it's quite. It's got. It's got its charm. I think pushed works slightly better for that. I'll just gonna bring the exposure up a little bit. So that's where we were. That's where we are now. So we've got these frames here. And just to give you a quick demonstration of what these do, they're kind of just little thin, slightly analog looking borders, slightly soft, slightly wonky, and you can remove them like that. If you want to remove the grain, you can just go to remove grain and take off the grain completely. Or you can add like a load of grain or a bit of grain. Light vignette and medium tended to be my go-to I do like to put a frame on as well because just from you know going from looking at the digital file just to to where you get to it's quite a leap but they're quite subtle but I think if you kind of layer them up like that then you do get a nice look to it so this one here let's try a portrait 800 before after so I think that's a little bit overexposed so let's just bring that down by about two-thirds of a stop and I'm going to give this one a portrait 800. A few kind of colour tints in there. Very tiny hint of green. It's it's a nice one, portrait 800. It's it's quite it's quite characterful, but it's it's not too in your face. So we've got some heavy evening sun here. So let's go for a 400 pushed. That's nice. <laughs> Works. Some bikes here in Marleybone taken on X100S. Let's give that portrait 800. Those greys have just got a little bit more colour in them there. Let's give that a bit of a vignette. That's a bit too much. Light one. There we go. That looks good. Nice sunny shot. Let's go portrait 400. Maybe a medium vignette or a light vignette, maybe. Yeah, a light vignette on that. Let's bring the exposure down slightly. So you see all that yellowiness in that green that's just kind of come out and where it was sort of very sharp it's kind of now got this sort of softer grain the skin tones have got a bit softer and it's just what portrait 400 does really i i just use this on everything i find this to be a general good all-rounder so for this girl here let's look at portrait 400 it's, it's all right yeah uh pulled is a bit too soft maybe pushed is nice and we're just up that exposure very slightly maybe look at a vignette somewhere around there that just works for me this guy here portrait 800 it's working nicely pulls pushed portrait 400 portrait 160 portrait uc this is portrait uc is a good one it has a bit of character but it's also quite versatile i like this preset i it's a it's a go-to a lot for me so we've got some quite vibrant colors here portrait 400 does its thing but if i show you what the low contrast does then you you will understand that kind of very soft um very pastely look that works well in sort of bright sunshine it retains some highlights and makes everything look quite flat and muted but has a has a nice kind of quality to it so let's go for portrait 800 here that's looking good maybe pushed yeah maybe a bit of a vignette that's good i like that it's gone from there to there we've got a little bit more green in those blues that skin tones just softened up nicely so we've got a couple in the field gonna go to portrait 400 again because it's just my go-to and then maybe a heavy vignette on that so so we were this one's got some quite vibrant colors in so let's have a look at what a 160 would do here um you can see how that's changed that red maybe make it a pushed version so it's just got a little bit of extra kick in the contrast and the vibrance that's where we were that's where we are now maybe just take the exposure down oh no it's okay maybe we need a light vignette there we go we've got this piper here at a wedding uh let's crop him into the center slightly more and Portrait 400, it's just my go-to. There we go. And then maybe a light vignette, maybe medium, maybe that's a bit, mm, a light one, yeah. 
maybe pull that exposure down very slightly. So we were, that's where we are now. If you look at how it's just kind of, it's taken some of those heavy reds out of the skin and just made it a more kind of a nicer skin tone and that grass, it's taken that yellowiness out of it. And it just feels, feels like Portrait 400 for me. So again, I'm just going to go to Portrait 400. Maybe pull the exposure down slightly. We've got a shot in the city here. Let's try Portrait 400. Just my go-to again. That works well, but let's give it a little bit more character. Maybe a 800 pushed. There we go. That's good. So with the frame PNG overlays, we've just got a load of different ones, different aspect ratios, um, four by three, um, two by three. We've got a square one here. So I'm just going to drag this on top here. It's going to appear as a smart object. And these have uh, transparency to them. So you can just put them on like that, give them a bit more head height. Maybe I want to just expand that out a little bit and give the frame a bit more room. So you can do things like that, or you can cut them in a bit further just to make them look a bit more natural, like you've tried to get rid of it and you've just got that kind of analog frame just there. If you want to do that, um, some people are into that, some people are not. So choice is yours. I'll put a link in the description that will take you to where you can get these. These have become my most used presets. They're probably both my most subtle presets, but they're also the ones I've spent the longest time developing. For the best part of a year, I've been shooting portrait film and digital side by side and then tweaking the presets and using them for a bit and then tweaking them again and keeping this process up until I was completely happy with them. It's a difficult balance to make a preset that both looks realistically like a film stock but is also versatile and usable. It's all about finding that exact balance where everything just works all of the time. And these are nowhere near as extreme as some of my other presets like my Aerochromes or my Kodachrome emulations or my Cinestill 800T. Those are all a lot of fun to play with, but they can be a bit much sometimes. With this portrait pack, I was looking to create something that was properly workable and reliable for more professional work. If you do purchase these, thank you very much because this is the main way I fund my channel. The more presets I sell, the more videos I can make for you guys. I'm also moving house soon and that means I'll have a much bigger studio space, meaning that making videos will be a much more efficient process. I've got a load of videos in production at the moment, which I'll try to make in between doing all the usual moving house shenanigans. But anyway, I'll be back soon with some more videos, so bye bye for now.